Alrighty, folks. Well, we are here today for another episode of Brush Hour. Now, this is our show where uh, we talk about everything brushes. And of course, as you know, I am uh, obsessed with brushes. And of course, I love to make brushes and talk about them all day long. So maybe that makes me really boring at a party. I don't know. But for this particular hour, it makes me hopefully kind of an interesting guy that you want to hang out with so we can talk about brushes. Today, we're talking about inking. Now, when we talk about inking, um, part of me here, I'm just checking in on my, on my live stream. It looks like Behance something isn't going on. What's going on? Is it working? Come on, gang. Uh, looks like it's working now. Just want to be sure things are good. Yeah, okay. Anyway, today we're talking about inking, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, several different categories here. Now, we're going to start with clean inking. What I mean is inking tools that are clean, sharp, and one of the problems that people have with um, inking in Photoshop and Fresco is, holy cow, there are hundreds of inkers to choose from. And you say, well, which one do I need for the style that I'm trying to work in right now at this very moment, right now? And if you're doing a kind of comic book work, for example, where you need some really sharp technical pen, for example, well, you know, we got you covered. Um, if you want to have something that has more of a feel of a thick to thin line where you can control it with the pen pressure. Of course, we have you covered. You want a chiseled ink tip, we have you covered. Ballpoint pen, it's all there, but you got to know where to look and you have to know where to grab these tools and how to use them. And so I'm here to help you with that today. Now, before I get going, I'm going to say hi to some folks in the chat. Um, what's up, Clever? Brush it off. Ha ha ha. Very nice. I love the puns. You know I like the puns. Froha's here and Bev and Tim and Anne and Dorina and Andreas. Nice to see you all. Thanks for hanging out. Moat of Void is here. Lise Vandenberg. Da, 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 da. Sean. Well, gang, time's a wasting, so it's time for us to get cracking with this. So why don't we start with these clean inking tools. Now, what I've done here is I've created a little library. If you don't use libraries and don't know what libraries are, um, let me just quickly run over that for you. You can in Photoshop, or Illustrator, or elsewhere, create libraries for yourselves. And just imagine that libraries are like a suitcase, a virtual suitcase, that travels with you everywhere you go, no matter which computer you're using, no matter which machine, no matter which uh, iPad, it doesn't matter. Um, but if I create this library of brushes, for example, which is what I've done here, right? And I then go and I open Fresco on my iPad. Well, I don't have to go and load these or anything. They will just magically show up in my libraries panel. Let's say that, you know, hope this doesn't ever happen, but my computer just dies and I lose everything. Okay, well, my libraries with my brushes are still there. They're just sitting there totally fine. I go open up someone else's computer, sign in with my Adobe credentials, open up Photoshop and start using those brushes right away. So anyway, take advantage of libraries if you're not doing so, they're pretty fantastic. Ah, oh, ha, 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 okay. Now, we are gonna look at this clean <clears throat> category here. I'm gonna start with the clean comics brush right here. Now, where is the clean comics brush, you might ask? Well, if you open up your old mega pack, the trusty mega pack right here, and go to the ink box, you will find the majority of these tools, okay? And here under clean as a whistle, which is another clean one, you're gonna see the clean comics brush, okay? And the clean comics brush is just what you need for the most basic and probably most common use of inking in a digital environment. I'll zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Where you just need to be able to make lines that go from a thin to thick and out again. With no wonky blobs and no weird marks of any sort. Okay, just a nice thin to thick with lots and lots of control. And don't forget our good friend smoothing right up here at the top Okay, smoothing is here to help you out with um, the smoothness of the lines that you draw. And uh, you can set that value. I'm gonna set it to like, say, let's say 20%. And now when I draw, I'm gonna feel right away, oh my gosh, I can make these perfect loopy curvilinear patterns. And um, the smoothing is there in the background just giving me an assist. There are different modes for this, by the way. You can turn these on. You can have the pulled string mode. I'm gonna turn that on. You'll see now my cursor is well ahead 
of the stroke. And what it does is it allows me to decide where I want to go. See this? I can stop and I can move in another direction and I've got a lot of wiggle room to do this. Now it's a little difficult to describe how that feels without you actually using that mode. And a lot of people like to draw in the pulled string mode for extra precision. So you can try that out. I'm using the stroke catch up mode at the moment, okay? And uh, I like that one because it just kind of follows along with the cursor as I draw. It feels very natural. Okay, so clean comics. Yeah, in this case, you are in good shape for just nice, smooth line work. Okay. Hey, da, 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 da. look at that. Very, very easy to control. Okay. But there are some of you who say, wait a second, I don't want that thick to thin line action. I want something more like a tech pen. Okay. And of course, we have technical pens in several categories of brushes. Uh, one of them, which I really love, is the manga brushes. If you haven't downloaded these, make sure you grab them. Now, where do you download the brushes? I like to always show everybody this in case you missed it. In previous episodes, you come up here to the top right corner of your brushes panel, all right? And here we see, get more brushes, right? And it's not trying to be bossy or anything, um, but that's just what it says, get more brushes. And when you tap on that, it's gonna take you to a page where you, you can sign in and download over 1,800 different custom brushes. And the manga brush set is in there. And what I like about the manga brush set is a lot of the inking tools. And at the bottom, you're gonna find Tech Pen Super and Tech Pen Thicker. And these Tech Pens look and feel just like if you've ever used a Micron Pigma pen, for example, those are very popular. Um, they are just as clean as you can get. And the line width varies uh, extremely, uh, in, in, very little, okay? There's there's almost not, no variation, but there is a little, which is just like how it would be to draw with a real tech pen. So if I really bear down, I'm gonna get a slightly thicker line, and if I'm very careful, I can get very, very fine lines. But they always have this nice, even width to them. See that? So, for those of you who are looking for that kind of a look, and oftentimes, you know, you will find that, in fact, with sort of a manga style, where that line art is all kind of um, uniform, right? And I'm no, no expert at drawing in this style. And they always have like, ah, they always like, mouth is wide open, screaming about something. There we go. Ah. Let's do some cool, funky manga hair. Ah, I don't know. I grew up with Dragon Ball, so I guess my point of reference is maybe too old, but you get the idea. Okay, um, so we've got you covered there as well. Now with these tech pens, okay, you also have the ability to let the pen rest for a moment in one spot, and what'll happen is the ink will pool, okay? So if I do a, lot, a rest, draw a line, rest, draw a line, rest, See what's happening? Look at these little dots where the ink is just pooling and it's continuing to flow out of the pen. That was done for realism. If you don't like that, okay, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, just come over here to your brush settings panel and turn off this option right here, build up. Build up is an option we've built into the Photoshop brush settings panel that makes it so that if your stylus is at rest, the stamping that is happening with your brush will continue to go on until you move it again in another direction. Um, and so this can be something that people like for different effects, and I found it useful for emulating that feel of using a tech pen and just resting it like that. But you do have the option to turn it off. All right, let's see. Um, Tim, I totally agree with you that the Get More Brushes menu entry should be featured more prominently. I totally agree. I will mention that again uh, to the Photoshop team and maybe we can do that. We can at least add some color to it or something. You know, it, it should stand out more because 
There's a ridiculous number of brushes available. And unfortunately, many, many, many people who are um, uh, have a Photoshop or a Fresco subscription are not taking advantage of those thousands of brushes. Um, yes, the handoff between Fresco and Photoshop is totally seamless. Uh, fantastic. All these brushes work brilliantly in Fresco. And if you create libraries, like I said, you know, it's so cool to have them just travel with you. How convenient. Okay. Now, let's go back here, because there's another brush I want to talk about in the manga set, and that is the Manga Edge. There it is. Now, the Manga Edge brush actually takes advantage of a brush tip that is a triangle, which you might not realize is a great shape for drawing crisp, sharp art, but it really is. Let's see if I make a little dot, you'll see the little, it's a little triangle. This just gives you a real edge to the line, especially if you do these little stops like that, and stop and move, and stop. You can see how nice that is. Um, and a lot of people draw with this brush. Again, turn on smoothing if you want it to be, you to have an extra degree of control. Um, but yeah, this is just really, really nice. Very sharp sharp as can be. This is just as sharp as you're going to get right there. I really like the way it feels. Um, and I have done some nice inking for uh, editorial work with this brush numerous times. And um, it has not let me down. So check it out. Now you might be also noticing that this kind of brush, although it's in the um, manga brush set, really that's just, you know, I had to come up with names for these brushes, right? And there is a theme, generally speaking, for that brush set inspired by Japanese comics. But a brush like this is also similar to, and um, in fact, it is a variant of the Belgian comics inker that I created for the Mega Pack all those years ago. And you'll see with like these, this kind of a mark that I'm making here along the hair, this kind of one, two, and, a, and then a nice skinny one. You might recognize the style of line work of um, someone like Franca, or I'll spell that out for you. <laughs> Look up this gentleman, um, or maybe Uderzo. These Franco-Belgian comics artists uh, who were working um, with brush and sometimes with um, a certain kind of pens to create this look that you're seeing right here, okay? And if you want a, a slightly chunkier version of this, you can go ahead and grab that Belgian comics brush, which it also has a bit more uh, jitter built in, uh, but there it is. And, and it also has a wider range of, of thin, thin, thin to really fat and chunky. And you can see how the edge of the, the line breaks up slightly here and there, which is wonderful because you're just getting that imperfection of the traditional media built into the digital brush. Um, but these are all still technically in this clean category of brushes right here. And I mentioned chisel tips. There are times where you're going to want to have a chisel tip. Um, now, this chisel brush will respond to the angle at which I am drawing. All right. And again, this is found in that Mega Pack ink box. Um, and so that means that if I am taking my pen and I'm rotating my wrist to the right, okay, I'm a lefty. I'm going to get a fat line coming this way, okay? And I can see how that chisel is working right there, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. okay? But if I rotate it this way, skinnier lines coming this way, fatter lines coming down, right? So it is responding to the direction of the, uh, the tool, the direction in which it's held, not the direction in which it's moving, okay? So 
You can do that with a Wacom stylus, any stylus built for something like an Intuos uh, tablet or a Cintiq, okay? Or Wacom One, these will respect pen tilt. And it's nice to have that option for chisel. And it's also great for writing, if you're doing comics lettering or just, you know, um, effects. Right? And any fans of uh, Bill Watterson and Calvin and Hobbes will recognize the quality that we're getting right there in that thick to thin action as well. Um, very commonly seen with an edge like this where it gets cut off because of the angle but you're holding the tool, right? So if you are a fan, this is for you. I'll just bust this out. Everyone's got something they can draw from memory in a couple of seconds. And for me, it's Calvin. There you go. Whoops, messed up the hair, but you get the idea. There he is. Okay, now, please don't sue me, Bill Watterson. I love you. Um, I'm not going to turn that into a bumper sticker, I promise. All right, we're going to we're going to move on now from the clean category. Um, although there are there are of course others, but I think that should get you covered there with a few basics. Okay, let's just quickly review uh, some of those brushes. Now remember, these are found in the Mega Pack ink box, and a couple of them are in the manga brush set. But we had the uh, clean comics brush. We have the uh, Belgian comics. The manga um, edge we didn't cover the manga basic brush but that's a nice mostly even line quality a little bit of line variation and a different brush tip shape um, from the other tech pen okay and has a little less of a sort of a bleed on the edges so a nice one to draw with as well um, and we also covered uh, the um, the chisel, did I say that already? Pardon me if I did. And I think the tech pen, and that's pretty much it. Um, there was one that I threw in here because I just really love it. Uh, I think it's it still counts as a, as a clean brush. It's called the Fountainia GP. That's G-I-P-I. B, the letter B. Fountainia GP B. And if you use enough pressure you're gonna get a nice dark line. But the reason I sort of, this kind of lives in two worlds. It lives between sort of rough and smooth because you're gonna get the line to break up here and there and with a softer amount of pressure, you know, you even get like this kind of thing happening, right? With a little bit of ink just kind of dotting along the edge there, right? Look at that. So closer to like a felt pen or a fountain pen even, um, which, you know, you can get a pretty clean line with. So I was sort of torn on, on where to put that one, um, but it helps us to segue into our next category, which is rough brushes, okay? Now, the Mega Pack is full of rough brushes. If I open that up right now, Mega Pack ink box, uh, even if I just go to the letter R down here, right? Rough brush, rough carver, rough comics, rough cutter, rough hatcher, rough inker, rough inker, rough inker, rough inker, rough stick. Okay, lots and lots and lots. Um, but there are others in there that don't even include the word rough, but they just work with a nice rough quality to them. And one of the things that when people first start drawing digitally, they get frustrated with is how everything is clean and sharp. And so the brushes that you use can eliminate that problem immediately. And you can really start diving into what's possible to make marks that feel like traditional media as well as marks that you just couldn't make at all with traditional media um, and you still have that amazing power of undo right so you can always go back and travel in time uh, so to start this one off i want to start really simple in the manga brush set there is a brush called the newsprint grit brush newsprint grit and i'm going to write with it right now newsprint grit 
And let's zoom in on that and see what it's doing. Ah, interesting. Well, one thing I noticed right off the bat with this is, okay, sports fans, who can tell me what's going on here at the edges of this? All the tech heads out there who know their brush business and know what's going on with raster graphics, what do you see happening on the edge here? Pop quiz. Akansha is asking, are the brushes free? Yes and no. If you have a Photoshop subscription, which in the United States is $9.99 a month, you also get a portfolio on Behance with that. You also get a light box um, and you get, gosh, you get uh, such an amazing plan. It's the photography plan, $9.99 a month. And with that, you get all the brushes, okay, in addition to other goodies. So I hope that answers your question. Moat Avoid is answering the question correctly. Dissolve. We are using the dissolve mode with the newsprint grit brush. No anti-aliasing is occurring. Okay, and that's what's causing it to have that slightly rougher look. And it just breaks apart here and there. See that? And what's great about this is you don't even have to try. Any line you draw is just going to automatically do that. So if you're looking for a really fine line that doesn't feel too clean, just grab this newsprint grit brush and go to town. Now, if I bear down with it, I can get some pretty heavy lines, but they still have that nice rough texture to them, do they not? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, I wanna start with that one. Now, we're just starting simple, but we're gonna go crazy now, and we're gonna get into some really, really rough stuff. Um, example is the inkbox brush called Chopped. So let's take a look at the qualities of this one. Now, that is gritty, right? It is really, really gritty. And so what's great about this is you could be doing something with, let me just grab that, um, oh, we didn't talk about the ballpoint pen. Sorry, I wanted to mention there is a ballpoint pen in there. For those of you who just love to draw with ballpoint pen, um, grab a nice blue color for your pen. Go to town. This one feels like a ballpoint pen. It even gives you slightly lighter value when you use less pressure. So you can do, just like you would with a real ballpoint pen, some value building up where you go darker and darker and get a nice dark line and then do some really, really light marks. Okay, just wanna point that out. Uh, but here, let me grab a, um, a cleaner brush for a moment here. So I'm gonna grab that Manga Basic and show you why some of these really rough brushes are fun, okay? So we're gonna have this, uh, this character here. All right, and just wearing some kind of a cool coat or whatever. Now look, if I grab that chopped brush, combining the smooth and the rough gives you the opportunity to add some interesting qualities to the drawing, right? See that? zoom in on that so by doing that now you're combining your inking tools smooth and rough and you're gonna get some pretty cool stuff going on so in addition to simply drawing with the brush right and just using it for what its qualities are okay these really unpredictable chunky lines which is fine but you can also use them in combination with a thin brush that is really clean and combine the two and get some neat stuff. Um, and a lot of artists do this with brush, you know, they'll use, and when I say brush, I mean like with traditional brush, brush and ink, but they'll use a little dry brush and they'll do that and, com and combine that with a nice clean outline like uh, the comics artist, uh, Sean, um, Oh, why am I having trouble remembering his name? 
He's an English guy. He did a, if they did a comic called um, Criminal. Look this up. Criminal is the name of the comic series. The artist is Sean, and I can't remember his last name. Um, in that series, he uses really, really fine line work to outline everything, right? And then, on top of that, he'll grab a brushy, dry, a dry brush, rather, and then do like his shading. Um, and this is a separate category I wanted to cover, which is which is brush pens. But I thought I might throw them into the um, the rough brush section because you can use them in that way. Uh, so, you know, uh, let's grab one of those brush pens. Actually, I'll go to the Mega Pack. I don't think I put it in my library here. Inside the Mega Pack, you can go to Brush Pen. You see several options here. And I'm going to show you another place to get a really amazing brush pen. Uh, but first, we'll start with the Mega Pack. You have three options here that are clean. You have the Brush Pen Ace, Brush Pen King, and Brush Pen Queen. Then you got some nice dry brush ones here. Brush Pen Dry, wow. Okay, and there are three of those. I'll just grab the second one here. The way these work is with Pen Tilt. If I hold my pen upright and draw with them, I'm going to get mostly clean line. If I hold it at an angle, the line will break apart, and we're going to get more of that kind of a look. Brush pen, wow, same thing, get that nice broken apart line. If I'm holding the pen upright, I'm going to get a much cleaner line. But someone like um, Sean Bleh, fill in the blank, I can't believe I don't remember his name, will do his clean line work and then do these solid fills of black for shadows, okay, like this. And the combination of the two is really, really nice looks excellent and especially if he's drawing like a human uh, face and what he'll do is um, let me uh, grab a cleaner brush here so let's imagine uh, we just gonna model a head here just to keep things simple okay obviously I'm really not spending time making this look believable, and that's totally fine. This is just to illustrate a point. What he'll do is he'll have that brush pen, so let's go back to that brush pen, and then here, underneath, see how he'll get that extra, this is, it's a top light situation, so we're gonna get the light under the brow ridge there. And let's say that light is it's gonna fall evenly on either side of the face, okay? Under the nose, upper lip, right? And that bit of that bit of texture in the darks when added to that nice clean line work. And he's just kind of he'll outline everything really, really clean too. And it just looks great. And you can see how that leaves quite a nice effect. Go back to a cleaner brush. And like the uh, the outline. Will be really, really clean. And it just kind of contains everything. Um, And I just love it. It's, it's a really cool combination of sharp, clean line work and then these more gritty textured shadows, you know? So that's a neat effect. All right, so back to these rough brushes. So that's a brief covering of the, um, the brush pens. And I'll show you a, a, a superior brush pen in a moment from another set. I don't want to go through these ones that I grabbed from the library because they're just so fun. Um, so let's go to this old brush ink. This is the kind of thing where you can really go nuts with adding very, very rough inking to whatever it is you're drawing. 
Um, and examples of why this would be useful, for example, you know, you might take uh, another brush, for example, let's grab this um, that GP pen. And maybe I'm drawing some building off in the distance, okay? And it's just a simple structure. Okay, and then I go ahead and I grab that old brush ink and I just knock in, whoops, make it a little smaller. There we go. And just knock in my darks like that. And what's cool is I can leave a little space here and there between some of the brush strokes. And it just gives this nice texture to that whole thing, right? I could even just like sort of tap on the canvas here and there with this. See what that does? It just adds a little bit of interest here and there. Knocking a door, not be too precise. And that can become a style in and of itself, right? See what I mean? So that is a cool way to use another rough brush. And then if you're a fan of someone like Ralph Steadman or um, other artists who use a line quality like this up here, okay, well, what you can do is uh, grab, let's see if we can find it here, the full bleed brush, there we go. Now the full bleed brush comes from the Mega Pack ink box again. And this is one of those brushes where instead of doing a line, um, you know, Saul Steinberg is another example of someone who draws like this, or, or uh, I'm trying to think, I'm blanking on the name of the guy, shame on me, who, who uh, does, he did like beautiful poster art and things. I even named a, a brush after him and I can't remember his name. It'll come to me. Um, let's see this, you can just kind of, I'm, I'm sort of zigzagging my, my line back and forth. To, to exaggerate what I'm doing, I'm doing this, okay? But I'm doing it close together, okay? And so this is a very cool thing you can do. make like a, a weird kind of like a crow or something. And this does have control with pen pressure, right? And it's nice to watch that line get broken apart in completely unpredictable ways. And the softness around the edge of some areas, okay, where it gets even softer, not 100% not gray, but uh, black, I mean, but a little bit of gray and a softer um, edge to it, even can create the impression that the ink was kind of wet and you didn't get 100% coverage there. It's a little diluted, if you know what I mean. Um, and I, I just love being able to do that. Very faint line too, you can be, can be made with this tool. So you have a range of literally one pixel. I'm basically drawing with a single pixel here as I go up to that, right? So completely crazy range of marks that can be made with that single tool, okay? All right, let's pause for questions. Da, 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 da. I thought seeing someone on Adobe Live make their own brush with flowers. I can't remember who, but I thought that was really cool. Hmm. Yeah, Leslie, you can make you can make anything into a brush. You know, if you want to make a flower, you just do this. Flower. Um, grab it. We just hide our other layers here for a moment. Boop, boop and say, edit, define, brush, preset. There you go, flower. Okay, come on over to your brushes. There it is, the most recent one created. Then go to your brush settings and start to play around with your um, brush settings, okay? 
and let's go to increase our spacing, right? Let's do some scattering there, like so. And you are going, look at that, flower time, okay? Creating a brush takes seconds. How fun is that? Okay, brief diversion there, brief diversion. Where were we? Back to our rough brushes, okay. Um, now, under the rough category, I had a couple more. I believe I wanted to show you rough, was rough cutter? Yeah, rough cutter is a nice one. This is similar. This is also in the ink box. This allows you though to have a bit more control over the line, see that? A bit more control. But if you wanna go nuts, just bear down and look at that nice chunky stroke that you get. That's just a chunk, nice chunk of ink, right? Gorgeous. So for this one, you really have that full range again of um, sizes for that single tool. And again, you can do that sort of scratchy, scratchy thing with it if you like. But I can go really thin too, really thin. Boy, talk about an egghead. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so to, to do a drawing like this, and if you were to print this and send it to somebody and say, hey, look at that, um, there's absolutely no way they'd say, boy, it's so obvious you used uh, Photoshop to draw that, it looks so digital. No, the whole point of this is to just enjoy that feeling you get with drawing with natural tools, right? Um, traditional tools. And, but then you have the amazing power of undo and all the other good things that come along with it. All right, so if you're looking for more rough brushes, go ahead and check out that category of brushes in there, rough brushes galore. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our next category, which is probably my favorite, texture. Texture. So when you're inking, as I showed a little bit with that example, um, with the comics, using a clean line and then a rough brush on the inside, Texture is just going to go, take you so far, it's so fun. Um, and I've selected a few brushes in here that I think are just really excellent for this purpose. Um, and I'll tell you where they're all located. Okay, so first we have the grinder. <clears throat> this is in the ink box. And the grinder just does that. Light pressure gives you just the tiniest bit of a line. Heavy pressure can just make all these kinds of marks like that. All right, so you're drawing an old door and you wanna add some streaky bits, right? Then just grab that grinder brush, go to town like that. Excellent. Um, all right, let's move on though, because we've got plenty here. Uh, we're looking also at our rough hatcher. I did an entire illustration with this one time for a demo. And it, ju it just adds the neatest textures. You can see right there, it's kind of like a hatching pattern. Now you can use this for all kinds of stuff, grass, rocks, tree bark. It's really one of those brushes I love for nature drawing. Uh, so let me just, uh, let's grab the old, oh boy, I'm sorry about this. We skipped the marker under the clean category. You like markers? Go into the ink box and grab the flat tip marker and render to your heart's content, okay? And what I love about this too is all you have to do to do your line work is size it down. How easy is that? Left bracket key, size the brush down. Do your line work, okay? Size it up, add some tone, whatever. Okay, sorry about that, I forgot that one. Um, I'm gonna grab though the uh, ballpoint pen and make kind of like a, a rock shape right there. So there's our rock, right? Nothing too fancy. Alrighty, 
Now, let's grab that rough hatcher. Oh yeah. And just come in here and add all kinds of yummy rock textures to that rock. Just like that. Beautiful. I love it. So nice. Just dirty it up. Dirty it up. Look at that. Mm. Makes me think of those children's books I grew up with. A lot of them were published in the 60s and 70s, and artists used to really experiment with texture a lot. Um, you know, like cut out some shape for a tree, for example, like this. I'm using the lasso tool here, right? And put that little tree right there. Grab a brush like this. See? Like this rough hatcher. And they just play around with that. Voila! You are good to go. All right, want some grass? Just pop in some texture like this. Pop it in front of that rock. Simple, 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 simple. And what I like is if you use really light pressure, okay, the scattering of the brush gets reduced to nothing. No scatter. So then you're just working with that stamp, okay? So you can control it and you can use it to create a straight line of activity like that. Ah, simple, simple, simple. Simple but delightful, right? Okay, next. How can you go wrong with the Brayer brushes? Now these are in the ink box as well. They're called Brayer Boss. But if you've ever worked with a roller and ink, then you know what this is about. There's nothing more fun. You grab a little brayer, a little roller, and roll that ink on, okay? And what I like about this is, boy, a million things, but sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually draw with it. And I do this by putting down something on the canvas like this, da, da, da. just make kind of a mess go in different directions and then I'll grab like white and I'll carve back into it I'll sort of knock it back carve back in you could do this also by erasing using the clear mode for the brush um, or you could use another brayer so let's go and look inside there there's so many of them go to our ink box And uh, Brayer Boss. Let's grab the second one. I like this one. These are nice and big. By the way, one of these is built into uh, Fresco, so you are all set with that. Just kind of grab the clear mode, come in here, and just kind of carve away at what I was doing like this. So it's like this additive subtractive process, you know? And then you can make a nice shape like that and then grab an actual brush for drawing from my library here. So why don't we grab that old brush ink brush right there. Doop. Grab some white. And then just come in here like that. And say oh yeah. Draw this neat face with the hair in the back all bunched up like that. Put a little outline in there if you want. But isn't that fun? You could really do this kind of mark making where you go all weird and crazy and have fun with it. It's just a blast. I love it. Okay, now, comics fans, and I know you're out there. Jack Kirby, 
You may remember Jack Kirby, right? Drew many of your favorite characters. Um, so, we've got the Hulk. There he is. Gritting his teeth. I'm no Jack Kirby, but. Here we got the Hulk, and we throw some little Kirby crackle behind him. Okay, you know what that is? It's that cool effect that he used Jack Kirby all the time for backgrounds and special effects and all that business. So Hulk standing right there and I just grab my Kirby Crackle brush, uh, which I popped in here in our library somewhere. Where did I put that? Uh, there it is, K Crackle 3. And then, that's a fun one. I'm gonna add a little of that texture for the Kirby Crackle. Jack Kirby. Fun, right? And you don't have to spend all that time making those circles. Just grab that brush and go to town. And you are set, my friends. Look at that. Little two second Hulk drawing with a few brushes. Okay. All right, so texture. Many, many brushes to choose from in that ink category. Um, and I want to just point out that you have the option, as we've discussed in previous brush hours, to play with the halftones because halftones are one of your best friends when it comes to adding texture. So do be sure to grab that halftone brush set so you can come in and start doing stuff like that. Okay, you want to add some texture, you can do this all day long, right? Pressure responsive, um, so many different options. And I like this squiggle bop. That's a weird one. Woo. Okay, so don't forget to combine your inks with your halftones for an extra powerful punch if that's what you're looking for. Okay. Alrighty, now. We are coming to our last category, which is special effects. And uh, for this, we are going to be talking about just crazy random weird brushes that you can just use for all sorts of things, um, comics or otherwise. I think I've got an extra line in there for something. What's that from? There we go. Get rid of this little guy. There we go. Uh, okay, so I put a few brushes in here for that purpose. Uh, in this library. I'm going to start with this um, manga crazy effects lines. This is in that manga brush set. And I'm going to zoom out for this one because it's a really huge brush as you can see from the stamp. Look at that. So fun. So you want to do effects lines for an explosion for example. Well, let's increase the size of our canvas here. Make this a big canvas. Okay. And you notice I'm using a little off-white color in the back. It's because I don't like to look at a bright white canvas. It just kind of hurts my eyes, folks. I don't know about the rest of you, but... I'm going to make a little section here for the canvas to demonstrate this brush. So let's say that over here in the bottom left corner, there's some kind of explosion or some magical, mystical thing is happening. So what this brush does is... Whoops, let's use black. Is it moves in the direction of my stylus. See that? So as I'm coming from bottom and moving to the top left and in a curvilinear path, I'm going to get those lines to follow that action. See that? How fun is that? So you can do an effect where maybe 
there's not so much going on towards the bottom left, but as I come out to the bottom of it to the top right, I increase the density of those lines. Okay, see that? And I could even, if I wanted to, make the brush smaller down here. So smaller, then start to get bigger as I move out towards the edge and just really fill that in. So pretty fun special effects right there for inking. And there are other options like that. There's broken lines, which does the same thing. See that? And I really like these for suggesting some kind of action is happening. And there, is, there are these lines like emanating from that main source, right? Or if you just want to add some tone as well, this is a cool way to do it. These are big brushes, okay, be aware. They're over a thousand pixels in size, so you can really cover a lot of territory with them very quickly. Great for working in panels if you're doing comics work. Um, really powerful stuff. Uh, we also have action lines of another kind, like this, more subtle, right? You do those in waves. You can add them in, in little sections. And they, again, they respond to the direction you're moving the stylus, right? So just as another demo, if I were to move in a perfect circle, see that? That's fun. Woo! You can do this kind of thing all day and make a really cool little starburst like that. So that is another way to use that, okay? Um, we have another special effects here, the brush, let me find it. Da, 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 da. It's a... Here we go, the fat hatch brush. Um, this one also in the mega pack. And you can see what it does is on the inside of the stroke that you make, okay, it creates this hatch pattern. It's gonna be different every time. It's uh, unpredictable, which is what I like about it. Um, but let's say you're doing some kind of a jungle scene or what have you. Um, you could always take the brush and you could go to your brush settings and you could increase the spacing of the brush and then go to your dual brush and increase the spacing there as well. So you're increasing that hatching like so and make it a little farther apart. And if I just put this in the background of my panel, right? You're gonna get the impression of, oh yeah, it's like there's some palm foliage, right? Or jungle foliage rather happening back there in the background. And that's the kind of thing you could use to really liven things up for a background panel in a comic or even just as a texture in your illustration, <clears throat> pardon me. I think that's going to be a pretty nifty thing. Uh, alrighty. Now, that just leaves uh, this one other brush, which is a really weird one. It's also from the, the manga uh, brush set. It's called Short Burst. Um, and this one is like for a short explosion is I say short burst because it's called short burst you can go this way or you can go that way so it's like BAM something happened Eerp. Wow what happened there I don't know something crazy so you just knock out these little sharp things plenty to play with there and don't forget the crosshatch brush set um, the crosshatch brushes there are dozens of them in there, and you can certainly combine those with inking and get really cool effects because crosshatching is something inkers use all the time for their illustrations. I don't have their cross uh, hatch brushes loaded right now, but go ahead and check those out. Um, we're running out of time. I got to cut it short. I got to say, hey, thanks for watching, but we did cover our four categories. There's plenty to talk about in the next episode in two weeks, um, so hope you'll tune in for that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, tomorrow and Thursday, I've got my draw along show. Hope you tune in for that. And Friday, I've also got my master class. Anybody out there who is um, sort of working professional or aspiring to be one, the master class is something I think you get a lot out of. Um, and so that's really what that's for. Anyway, thanks for joining me, gang.
Have a great rest of your Tuesday and take care of each other and uh, take care of yourselves. And please remember to be kind. Ciao for now. Thank you.